Here's an interesting application of the chain rule in multivariable calculus. We're given two functions, position and temperature. Position is a function of t, time, we'll call it, right? And the position function of t is given by this, 2 cosine of t, sine of t, and t, where those are the x, y, and z components of this function, respectively. Temperature is a function of x, y, and z. In other words, at every point in uh, three-dimensional space, it, there is a unique temperature. And we can find that unique temperature by this function, e to the negative z times sine of x plus y. We input the x, y, and z, and we get out a temperature. Now, there's this mapping notation I've written down here. P is a function of, uh, I'm sorry, P is a function that maps real numbers to vectors in R3. That's what this uh, R to R3 means. And T is a function that maps vectors in R3 to real numbers. Again, just so that you get used to this notation. What it really means is that for P, our input is a scalar, a real number, and our output is some vector in R3. And for T, again, our input is a vector in R3, and our output is a scalar. And the question we're trying to address is, uh, what are the highest and lowest temperatures uh, for some uh, t in a given interval? And here the interval is negative pi over 2 to pi. Right? That's, that's what we're trying to address. Uh, before we do that, let's try and visualize each of these functions. Okay? So the position function is, if you look at the x and y components, you've got 2 cosine t for the x part, sine t for the y part. That should tell you that we've got an ellipse. Um, and the t for the z part means that it's some sort of helix in space. And you can see that in the graph that we've plotted using MVT. Um, and you can see that little red vector as we go from negative pi over 2 all the way up to uh, pi. Okay. Now, at any point in space, right, like this particular point in space, we can assign a temperature to it. The temperature function is a bit harder to visualize but it can be done. This is using the program DP graph. And first of all, look down in the corner over here where it says graph 3D and then it says A equals E to the negative Z times sine XY. Um, we can't plot the, the full function itself because really you would need four dimensions, right? You would need X, Y, Z and a fourth one, temperature. And, and we can't do that because we're limited to visualizing uh, three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional screen, but we can hack it. We can uh, get around that. And the way I've done that is I've said let A equal our temperature, and at this point you may say why A, why not T, because this program won't let me use the variable T. That's why. But we let A equal the temperature, right? And for a fixed temperature, for example, negative 3.864 is the temperature, for a fixed temperature like this negative 3.864, these are all the points in space in this bounding box, of course, from negative 3 to 3 to negative 3 to 3 and x, y, and z, respectively, right? These are all the points in space that have a temperature of negative 3.864. And if I want to increase the temperature to, say, uh, negative 0.958, these are all the points in space that have that temperature. And if I continue going up, oops, wow, look at that. Um, it will break and it will come back together. And now these are all the points that have a positive temperature of 0.1413 and these are all the points that have a positive temperature of 2.592 and so on and so on. I've made the temperature go from negative 6 all the way to positive 6. Okay, so at any given value of A, which is the temperature, these are all the points in space that have that temperature. So what do I have to do? I start off, you know, I go along some value of t. I'm now at a point in space, and I have to figure out where I am in space and where that point in space intersects with this function. Maybe it's like right there. Maybe that's that's it. Okay, so it's kind of hard to visualize the the temperature part, right? But let's let's apply some calculus to this. Okay, remember we're trying to figure out the highest and lowest temperatures in this given interval. And the way of doing that is to compose these two functions so that uh, your input is time and your output is temperature. That's what we want. It would be really great if we could input time and output temperature. Well, as it turns out, we can do that. 
And the way that we do that, oops, let's move this up here. The way that we do that is to say, all right, here's our temperature of x, y, and z. And I know that each variable x, y, and z each relies on t. So everywhere I see z, I'm going to put in whatever the z coordinate was, the z function was, and that's just t. Wherever I see x, I'm going to put in 2 cosine of t. And I did that down here. And wherever I see y, I'm going to put sine of t. And I did that there. So this is the function we want, t of p, t composed with p. It's a function where our input is time and our output is temperature. Now, at this point, it's a calculus one problem. We've, we've done all the multivariable calc stuff. We've successfully composed the functions. Now what we need to do is take the derivative of this function and set it equal to 0. Uh, it's not very pretty. This is what it is. I'm not going to bother going through all the steps. If you're in Calculus 3, you should be able to take the derivative. I do want to make a couple of notes about um, t prime of p, though, just immediately looking at it, what we can see. Uh, first of all, as temperature goes to infinity, I'm sorry, as time goes to infinity, temperature goes to zero because of the e to the negative t term. Also, we can bound uh, this stuff inside the parentheses, right? I know that the largest value sine can take on is 1, and the largest value that cosine can take on is 1, and that uh, the largest value of this cosine expression, this thing right here, uh, is going to be 1, and so this is 2, and then the largest value of this is going to be 1. So really inside the parentheses we have 1 plus 4, because it's 2 times 2. Right, so the largest this thing can possibly be is, you know, e to the negative t times five. That's the largest it can be. That's not to say it will actually get that big, but sometimes you want to consider the maximum before you get too heavily involved in computations. All right, now let's interpret this in two dimensions. This is a two-dimensional function. Um, input is uh, time. Output is temperature. I've already graphed it in. Uh, our favorite graphing program here, um, GeoGebra. So let's just go through and, and look at it. I'm going to click this to show uh, T of P, that's input time, output temperature, and there's the function. It's in blue. Uh, I want to show the bounds that we're looking for, negative pi over 2 to pi, so let's look at those bounds. And now, because this program is so great, I can uh, move my graph around I'm going to scale my axes appropriately, and I'm going to do something like that so I can better get a better view. And I can already see that the maximum of this function, the maximum temperature, is going to be a little greater than 1.6, and the minimum temperature looks to happen around here somewhere, and it's going to be probably like negative 0.1. Already we can make those guesses. Now I want to show uh, t of p prime, the derivative of t of p, right? What we just did before, that, that ugly looking function. Well, here it is. And again, we can kind of zoom things to get a better view of it. And I want to know, you know, where is this, there, where is this red function? Where is this derivative of uh, t of p? Where is it equal to zero? Well, here are those points. At uh, t is negative 0.59 and t is positive 2.55 about, rounded to two places. And now I want to show where t of p has a local min and max. Of course it's going to be the blue function evaluated at this x value, this, this t value, and the blue function evaluated at this t value. I click that to show, and there we have our min and our max. The local maximum temperature is going to be 1.61, like I said, a little bit greater than 1.6. And the local minimum temperature is going to be negative 0.07, which rounds to about negative 0.1. So our initial guesses were pretty accurate. Okay. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope this gives some visual insight into uh, all of the, the complex mathematics that you're doing. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.